Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Manipause.com podcast. As you can see, we have two very recognizable faces of two of the funniest ladies you're ever going to meet. We have Kathy Ladman, who made her name in stand-up comedy. And we have Mindy Sterling, who, among other things, is best known to every generation since the 1980s as Frau Farbissena. Dr. Evil, I want you to meet your son. My son? Yeah. Scott! <laughs> and we will get the scoop on that late, later on. So thank you, ladies, for being with us. Pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yes, it's so nice that you're available today with your bright faces on and, and wearing not not wearing t-shirts with logos on them. So Larry and I oh, can really never. stand out. We left that to you. Yes, yes, thank you so much. So Larry, go ahead and ask the first question because I know you're eager to find out something from- I, I'm from so logo. eager, I can't stand it. Okay. Uh, so I want to start with, with um, uh, Kathy real quick. And a lot of these questions I think are going to apply to both of you, but uh, Kathy, you went into a, a field at the time that wasn't really highly populated with women, and that is stand-up comedy. Marriage is very difficult. It's tough. It is. My parents were married for 63 years. You know the secret to longevity of my parents' marriage? Outlasting your opponent. I want to see you die. No, I want to see you die. Well, we'll see. Right. What made you decide to do that? And who were some of your inspirations? I always wanted to, I wanted to be a stand-up comic. I think since I was 13, I made a conscious decision that I wanted to do it. And I became interested in comedy from about the age of eight. And my, I used to listen to my parents' comedy albums. And one in particular, Nichols and May Examined Doctors, was one, was one that I just really connected with it at eight at wow. eight years old and wow. I memorized the whole album and then <laughs> at night when my mom would come into my room she would sit on the edge of my bed and I would say pr my prayers and then I would do a selection off the album for her <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think she really knew what to make of it but he, let me fast forward to um probably about 20 years ago I was doing a movie that Mike Nichols was directing. And what? I was standing, uh, just I happened to be standing next to him, shoulder to shoulder. And um, he was setting up a shot with a cinematographer and it was a quiet moment. And I didn't even think, think about it consciously, but I just started doing a piece of comedy from the album. And I said, gauze. And he said, gauze, without missing a beat, he says, gauze. I said, more gauze. He goes, more gauze, more gauze. More. And we started doing the bit from the album. And this took me back years ago to when I had the first inkling that I wanted to be a comedian. That's awesome. Wow. That is a great story. Yeah. And by the way, you know, you know who Joe Coy is, right? He's very funny. Yes. And he makes fun of his mom and his mom. Yes. When he told them that he didn't want to be a nurse or a doctor, which is pretty common for Filipino, his wife, his mother was like, well, who told you you were funny? Did you, <laughs> you know, so did you encounter any of that where your parents were like, hmm, you sure you want to do this? Well, I wouldn't say they were supportive. Um, <laughs> I would, you know, they, they, they really, they really didn't become supportive until I started to show some success. Uh -huh. I did not live in an environment where where my parents would say, go, go do it. You, you go for it. You go for your dreams. It was always go for what's practical. Fall back on something immediately. And, you know, like my mother, I told her I was majoring in um, theater and media and communications in college. And she said, I think you should um, study education to have something to fall back on. It was immediately that it was that notion of failure. Yeah, that was implanted yeah. in my brain so early that I, that you're not going to succeed at something that you really want to do. So do something that you have to do, and that was a message that was driven into my skull from a very early age. So it was really, I mean, I was I really had a fight against a lot of a lot of internal uh, messages 
to do what I really wanted to do because it's a scary thing to do stand up comedy. I would think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even if you have encouragement, yeah. but to not have encouragement, I had, you know, I had to give myself that extra push. Well, Mindy, you had encouragement, right? Because your dad, uh, yeah. Comedian, and I read that he was a partner of Shecky Greens for a while. Yes, my father, Dick Sterling, was he worked with Shecky and then he worked with Sammy Shore and then he worked with this guy, um, uh, Ray ba uh, Baumel, and then he did his own stuff. But my mom was also she was she she worked a, as a um, an ear, nose and throat doctor. So she wasn't a nurse, but she, you know, worked at the counter and um, they were always really like incredibly um, supportive. And, you know, my mother was the kind of person that would go, oh, show it, do that dance thing. Do, do the dance thing. For everyone. See, that's what I didn't have. Yeah. And so <laughs> you're like, oh God, it put a lot of pressure on me. So it's funny um, that you took it that way. I know, yeah, right? exactly. And oh yeah, I wasn't someone that was like, you know, like, okay. No, it was like, oh God. Um, so um, I, yeah, so I always had that. And um I think my dad uh, really he pushed me because he wanted me to be successful. And he thought at, at 13, he thought, well, if you can do Shakespeare, you can do anything. So I'm going to have uh, some woman come over to the house once a week and you're going to work on Shakespeare. And I was, wow, I was like, no. And she came over for like a couple of weeks and then realized you don't like this, do you? And I went, no, I <laughs> but I can't tell my dad. She goes, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I just, I was just kind of kooky and funny, I guess. And then I found out, oh my gosh, I don't have to be me because I was shy. I mean, were you shy? No, I was shy, <laughs> believe it or not. I was very shy until I found out that I didn't have to be me. And then I could be other people mm -hmm. and I could, you know, have this persona. And so that I think definitely, um, gave me, this supportive feeling in myself that, oh, we don't know who Mindy is, but she can do Shirley, blah, 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 or whatever. She does great characters, and I mostly do me, a version of me. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Now, I have a question for you. Women go through menopause, as we all know. And oh, where did um, that come from? Geez, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you two, I, we know we're Buzzkill, Buzzkill. Well, I know you. So, but men go through menopause. <laughs> Thank you. So men go through menopause, as you may or may not know. What do you think about that? Do you think men actually go through a change of life when they hit 50? And if so, what do you think happens to them? Well, well, I mean, I I think that everybody goes through changes yes, in agree. life. I, I mean, agree. every every several years you you go through a, me, a major me, metamorphosis i i think you're getting older if, if you're growing if you're not, if you're a person who wants to grow but i do think the difference and i'm not a physician as i think we all know Damn. um i know sorry when you gave me sorry that about shot. that idea i gave you yesterday but um you know i think that women go through a much greater hormonal uh shift being that we have the reproductive organs um, than men go through. So there's a lot more physical and emotional um, intensity, I think, that we go through. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong. Because you're wrong. You're first, wrong. You're right or wrong. I am wrong? Larry no, said, you're, no okay. you're wrong. What? Because women are so much more in touch with feelings and things that are going through and men are not. So they don't they don't think of it as that they may think, um, you know, that's, you know, a lot of times that's when, you know, when they hit, men hit 50 or whatever, that's when they stray or that's when they change their jobs or so they're going through something a little differently. They're not in touch with the kind of emotional feelings that we have to deal with. So that is all I'm going to say. Well, that's, oh, absolutely, that's, that's absolutely right. Because, and that's what Mike and I've been talking about is that it's very recognizable in women because they're not afraid to talk about it. Yeah. Men are because men see it as a sign of weakness. Yes. So they <laughs> clam up. And that's why I was just, you know, say, arguing with you in the sense that it's as intense, but people generally don't okay. know it's intense because right. 
guys just keep it right. locked. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Now, let me ask you, do you, is, is, um, is that kind of change uh, innate? Um, like, is, is, I mean, no, yeah. erase that. Is, is men not being able to express their feelings an innate physiological thing or is it a societal thing? I yeah. think it's societal because I, I think that we were always, yeah. right? We were always programmed that way that men have to be the provider. They have to be tough and strong. They can't show weakness. And I think when men hit 50, you know, you notice a lot of men start crying. They get a little bit more emotional. They'll cry at, you know, the drop of a hat. Um, and why is that? Because no they hat. have been storing it up for years and years and years. And they're starting to let it out because maybe they're, they're full and it's coming out. And, and, but it, it's a sign of weakness to show your wife or your family so they keep it bottled up as much as they can, and it makes them do weird things. And I, that, that's my feeling. Yeah, I do think part of it's innate, though, because if you think back, you know, I mean, to caveman days, right? I mean, in general, this is really generalized, so I don't want to hear from feminists everywhere, but it really but was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, cave person. Yes. They, uh, <laughs> they, the men tended to be the hunters, and the women tended to be the, the the nesters and the gatherers, right? And so I think that's sort of ingrained in, uh, maybe that's what's on the Y chromosome. Nobody's really sure. We know ear hair is on that and nose hair is on that. Okay. We're not sure what else is on there. So right. it's possible that that behavior may be ingrained in us. Right. And like Mike said, I mean, I know my dad never showed weakness. I mean, he was a wonderful, warm person, but he, he took it for the family and Mike's dad did the same thing. And so that's how we were raised. And I don't think People it was until- It's weakness. It's not weakness though. Right, he, but he thought it was. Right, it's he thought it was a weakness. Right. So, uh, and that's how we were raised. It's like, hey, you're the man, you need to go out and provide and you need to suck it up no matter what happens. You keep it inside and you tell everybody everything's fine, your business is good, your relationship is good, you're feeling good. Don't tell anybody that you're hurting. And well, it's like, don't, no feeling. Don't feel, right. just do, make sure that you provide for the family right. and, um, and just have sex. And that's where women are completely different. Right. They and just want to have sex all the time. Always. Right. Um, um, <laughs> but, 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 and then you can look at, but you can also look at like with my ex, I looked at his father and then it, it, it kind of made sense to me. Oh, okay. They were brought up here. His father was always working. He didn't know what to do with his children. He mother was in charge. Mm -hmm. So um, it's 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 very interesting. I yeah, know same that. with yeah. same with my almost ex. Uh, I look I look at his family and and his father. Uh, there were so many as as time goes by, he becomes more and more like his father, mm -hmm. completely emotionally unavailable, uh, angry, um, not expressing his feelings, and people tiptoeing around him. And that's dangerous stuff. Yeah. Well, the other thing that happens that we've noticed, and we've had friends do, uh, where it happened, uh, and that that was actually some of the motivation for starting this whole thing 15 years ago, was that there's a certain amount of projection, right? So in other words, their unhappiness can't be their own fault. It has to be somebody else's. And the easiest uh -huh. target is their wife. Mm. And so the solution is to find your soulmate Granted, she's only 23 years old, but she's your soulmate, right? And we, we've we seen so many guys. I mean, it just looks ridiculous. 60-year-old men who've been married for 30 years, they leave their wives for this 24, 25-year-old girl. They have nothing in common, whether it's music or literature or life experience or anything, culture. Mm -hmm. And yet, because of the sexual attraction, that's his soulmate. And those usually don't uh, end well. Right. And, and, and then they're even worse off now because they've abandoned their families, their spouse. And it's a real, real problem. And we've talked to this 
guy named Jed Diamond, who is a, a basically, a, he started the whole recognition uh, movement of, of male menopause. Mm -hmm. And he says that the, the amount of depression and suicide is gradually going up as the population of men over 60 is going up. Oh, and wow. Because they keep everything inside. And that, and it's a shame because we're 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 dying as women. Oh my God! To all we want. To you. and that's why we annoy you. That's why we ask. I mean, I remember asking my ex things like, "Are you okay? Is there I'm fine." Oh, okay. You're not kind of active. I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Right? I I don't know what else to do. And then there's that. Um, can we go to therapy together? I don't want to go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Or I'll go for a little while because you want me to go. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, it 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 becomes like. I don't know. I don't know if you can find your soulmate. I really don't know if I, I don't believe that your best friend is your, is your, um, you know, husband or wife. I believe, I don't believe that you can, I think your best friend is someone else, just a friend right. <laughs> that you can go to and talk about all the things that, you know, are, that are in your life. Um, and not, you don't always do that with your, your, you know, spouse. spouse. So, um, you know, um, a friend of mine, we were talking about this and, and she at the time was living with her longtime boyfriend and she said they don't under they don't realize that conversation is foreplay for us not touching us mm -hmm. conversation exchange of feelings that's that's sexy laughter yes mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Larry makes me laugh all the time. Oh and I think God. it's very sexy. It's just going. Uh, I love <laughs> it. So, you know, <laughs> women in comedy, right? It, your your careers last much longer than somebody who might be a starlet at one time and have a couple series and then it's over because maybe they're aging, their looks are disappearing, they were hired because of their looks. But women in comedy can work until the the end, right? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think Kathy, so. you're on tour all the time. I see all these dates that you're performing. Am I? I don't mean I'm well, I mean, I guess I'm kind of I you're guess working, you're not you're not traveling no. that much, but, but you I'm, have been. I doing. am busy. Yes. I am right. Like, you just, were in Utah or something the other day, right? Say it again. You weren't you in Utah or another state? Yes, I was yes. two weeks so ago. So she yes. is doing more and more. I am doing more now. Because she's, I was, but I used to back in the 80s and 90s, I was like on tour like th three out of four weeks of the month. And that was a lot. Ooh, that's that was tough. a very different time in comedy. That was a different time in my career, um, a different time in my life, you know, where I, you know, I was in my 30s and 40s. You didn't have a child. Didn't have a child yet. So yeah, it was very different. But age is not really played into it because you can change your routine. That's easy to change. Yes. And you're, you're still funny. Right. And people still want to hear you and they want to, you know, laugh and have a good time. And you could do it until you're 90 and yes. still get away with it. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's great. It's wonderful. And Mindy, you're I cannot do it until I'm 90. I have the worst memory ever. And so, <laughs> you know, you said that already, by the way, <laughs> we heard <laughs> that yeah. twice. Yeah. Yes. I, I won't remember you guys at all when we hang up. Um, <laughs> but um yeah. And it's just, I also too am like such a homebody person. So I enjoy being at home. I enjoy having my son. Um, and uh, so, but yeah, I think we all want to work and we all want, and when I was going through my divorce, I didn't think that I would be able to do this on my own at all, at all. I mean, I thought, oh my, who's going to, who's going to um, deal with my, um, you know, when I die, who's going to my funeral, who's going to do all of that and blah, blah, blah. And then it just, you know, after a while you realize, oh, oh, oh my God, I have a lot of great friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh You're God. sitting next to one of them. Yes. Yeah. And so it's like you that, and especially women, that's what we do. I don't need to go find someone to replace my ex. I just need to be authentic and to be around people that I can help and that can help me. And that's for me right now, a, a gift. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you a question about somebody who is a far cry from the person you just described. I want to know how you got the role of Frau Farbissena and how much of that original design of the character you changed and incorporated your concept and I idea of who she is. Because obviously it's an iconic character. Everybody 
They may not know your name, but they know your face. They know that character. It's one of the highlights of all the movies, particularly when you have your one-liner where you yell for Scott. Um, how did that happen? And how much did you add to that role? Well, I mean, I met uh, Mike at uh, the Groundlings. We were doing improv. And so he saw what I can do. And I think he was working in his head. He wanted to do something with um, Austin Powers. And so when the script came up and everything, he I, I went and auditioned. And um, I remember asking my father, talking to my father and saying, I need to do this German accent. It doesn't have to be polished, but I don't want to sound Jewish. So how can I do this German accent? And so uh, he was really good with dialect. So he helped me on the phone and I, you know, sort of, you know, kind of, you know, came to this is the who she is. And um <laughs> And I, it, you know, I have to be honest, I didn't study anybody. I didn't, I didn't even look to see, you know, um, what the real James Bond, there's a woman um, that plays very similar to the character of Frau. And I didn't want to look at it because I didn't want to copy her. And I just wanted to do what I do and hopefully that kind of works. Um, and it did. <clears throat> and the screaming, I mean, it would say she screams out Scott. But I have this scream <laughs> that's really annoying. And I remind my mother too. Um, when we you know get louder and uh, we scream, there is your your you know your register, and, and I get a little shrill. So I can say things like Scott, yeah. you know, as opposed to Scott. Right, right. <laughs> you know, Mindy's son wears headphones. Uh, and is on the computer. And when she Mindy needs him, she doesn't go into the room. She goes, Max! <laughs> and several times, what? <laughs> and it's usually, if I'm in the office here, he's right nearby. And it's usually because I want him to fix something on the, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. He goes, mom, move. And he comes over and takes over. But that is the one thing I can also make him laugh um, <laughs> because I, if we're in the car and I go into the garage, and it's very quiet. And I will just out of nowhere go, get out! <laughs> <laughs> and he just laughs. And it's just like the, the biggest thrill of my life. So I am like, you know, we talk about gifts in this world and I've been given some of the best gifts. My son is definitely by far the, the best um, and my friends, but it's like doing something like that. I never would, would have thought that that was gonna be so su successful and such a hit. Yeah. And I am thrilled when people recognize me and I am depressed when people don't. <laughs> now, did that, did you get any type <laughs> issues, any typecast issues after that uh, role? Like where people just, Oh, well, we want her to be this mean. Yeah. yeah I got a or lot. Her, I got a lot of that and things better. that were very, very similar. And there yeah. were a couple of times they were like, yeah, she's, I mean, still to this day, they'll say like, Oh, we want, um, maybe it's a voiceover thing and she's German or Russian. Well, that'll be the same for me, <laughs> German yeah. and Russian. I don't know. And so I ha I can't do it. Um, or I try to do it a little bit different, but for a while it was getting, it was in, in the beginning because they didn't know that I could, what I could do. So it was always like the same thing. So I did a lot of, um, and I do do a lot of nasty people I do a lot of like teachers and you know people in charge right and right. You know, that kind of a thing so that's how they see me too but i'm also very sweet and and funny <laughs> we hope people are going to see when they watch this is that they're going to say oh my god <laughs> oh, oh wow really what is she all about <laughs> so kathy um you not only are stand-up uh you have a one-woman show that tours also Yes. You are an actress. I've seen you on many, many shows, mm -hmm. but you're also a writer, which I did not know. And you've written several TV shows, right? TV shows. Yes, script. I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm a writer of my stand-up, and that's where right. that's where it starts. And I was on staff on a few shows, uh, Roseanne, Caroline in the City. I was also on a, a for a short time on the Wayne Brady Show, and I wrote on the Caroline Ray Show which was a talk show and I wrote a script for King of Queens. And I think that's, I think that pretty much is my writing career. It's, it's like, it's, I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to be a staff writer. It really wasn't what uh, thrilled me. 
Mm-hmm. Entertainment. Well, and then you didn't get to perform. So, I mean, right. like, well, I stand mean, up a little Montella bit. Right? In the city, I was able to do a recurring role, but it was still, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. And, um, you know, if I had stayed a staff writer, I would have been a very successful uh, showrunner by now, probably. But, Damn. Uh, but Damn. I know, but that's not what I wanted oh, yeah. to do. It's just not. So, what, what, what do you two do for fun? Kathy, what do you do for fun? Well, oh, I thought you meant together. <laughs> no, what do we do? I, well, I love. Well, maybe you walks. do it together. I don't know. Yeah, so we I, do. I love taking walks on the beach. We do that. Love watching. Wait a minute. Uh, th- this that. sounds like a dating site now. I right. Know. That's <laughs> the next question. So that's why I'm asking you. This Exercise question. walks on the beach. Okay. Um, movies. I love movies. Um, knit. I like knitting, but I haven't been picking it up so much lately, but I do like, I do like it. I'm starting to get, try to get back into my reading because I haven't been, I do a lot of audio books uh, when I'm driving. Um, what else do I like to do for fun? Well, we just went to the theater the other night. We just saw Death of, uh, uh, not Death of a Salesman. No, To Kill a uh, Mockingbird. Kill a Mockingbird. Ooh, how was oh, that? yeah. Oh, was that the so, Pantages? Where was that at? At the Pantages. Yes, yes. Oh, I heard it was please. great. So great. Absolutely amazing. I mean, to be able to go see theater like that and you're in LA and not in New York where it all kind of right. was, it was just wonderful. Oh, that's that's awesome. great. And yeah. Mandy, bowling is still your thing, right? Bowling? Oh God, I am such a bowler. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I don't do a lot of things. I'm, um, I, I'm desperately um, looking for a hobby. I've never had a hobby. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm a, I clean, so I clean a lot, but I have animals. So it's, you know, you have to understand that. And, but also too, it's very, um, uh, very cathartic for me and it's exercise. And, um, I do watch a lot of TV. I don't read. I'm not a great reader. So it, it's, it's harder for me. You do um, Pilates. I do Pilates. And you do walks. I do walk. We walk together a lot. Um, and uh, I cook really fast, <laughs> but she cooks, which is something that's I good. Cook. She does. I, I'm, a, cook. I'm a fat, very fat. I'm, I don't like. It's. I'm not into any She's like big good. thing. She made a delicious omelet this morning. So Ooh, good. Yummy. Mm. So, mm. so are you guys uh, in a part of your life right now where it's like, hey, if romance comes along, great, but we're not looking. We're not going on match. We're not. Do- or are you doing that? Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, it's a little soon for me, but yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm not, I, I, I don't I don't know what it's, I don't know what my life's going to look like in a year, two years, three years. I mean, I'm 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 really more like, uh, let's see what happens in life. You know, let's just see what happens. I'm 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 really just kind of going through this process now. And that, is that being imbu- uh, infused into your comedy, too? Um, a little bit. And it needs to more. It definitely, it's, I'm, I'm getting ready to do that more, yeah. Well, she had so many wonderful things to talk about when she was married. Yes. That now it's, like, ooh, let's see the other side of it and she'll find some because yeah. she makes me laugh all the time. Well, and you'll find an audience for that too because there's a lot of people in your oh, shoes. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, I am, uh, I really haven't looked and have not had a desire to um, deal with all that drama (laughs) because uh, my son who is on the autistic spectrum and he's going to be 28 next month and he's kind of my everything right now Um, and so I I put a lot of I I, want to make him happy I want to find what you know how to how he can live his life without me yeah so that's Mm -hmm. sort of what I do and then I've got the most amazing friends I mean, I am like um, a big friendship person. Um, She's a great friend. So I love hanging with my friends. I love animals. So I'm very simple that way, but I do need a hobby. And you do have a nice pussy there too, I see. (laughs) Yes. Behind you. Yes, I do. Thank you. Oh, um, she's not. Is she here? Yes. yes. I don't believe you said that, but I I knew what he meant though. I knew. Right there, yeah. There wasn't a moment where I crossed my legs. There was not a moment. (laughs) Basic instinct. So let me get your blood boiling for a second. That was actually funny, Larry. Good. I didn't know you had it in you. Um, your wife is going to kill you for saying that, but hey, that's, that's the problem. Um, so I want to get your blood boiling a little bit. Oh. Kanye West. Okay. So enough said. 
do I need to say any more? I mean, cancel culture is taking its toll on him. Everybody's dropped him. Yeah, so, but uh, Elon Musk brought him back. Oh, you're is that is that new news? Because I yeah, I didn't hear that. Yesterday, I, I read that he's back. That he is allowing him back on Twitter. But there's always going to be that. There's always going to be somebody that it, it infuriates the population in the world, mm -hmm. and then and and dropping them and blah blah blah. It's just like stars. And then there's going to be someone that is for him. Or like, you know, wants, you know, wants to, you know, bring that to that horrible section of people. It's absolutely horrific. And there's something wrong with him. So yeah. I, I, it's mental illness that right. it is someone that's a, that was I, I don't think he was that mean, you know, when he when he married, what's her name and had children. I can't believe that she would stay with someone like that. So something is he's bipolar. We know that. Right. So but work with that. There's got to be something and somebody needs to do that. And right now there isn't, but he's Josh, just, I'm Josh sorry. Dan had a great response. I don't know if you saw his Facebook Who? post. Who? Josh Gad. Oh, you know, okay. Gad, yeah. He came out and said, you know, he's a effing anti-Semite. And I have lots of friends, he said, that are bipolar and they're not racist. Yeah. Right. 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 True. right. As an excuse. Mm -hmm. uh, he's you know, just, and you wonder if he's been racist for a very long time. Mm -hmm. and this just, hey, you know what? I'm kind of bored. I'm going to say something. I don't right. know. Well, right. you know, I have to say that he's just a little, he's a little point in 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 the problem in our world today. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. he, there's so much more emboldened hatred and racism in our world today. Well, and it just takes someone to start that you know, that ball rolling. And now it's like, hey, we have a platform, everybody. We've got we've got someone who's big and and popular mm -hmm. and you know successful. Let's do it with him. All right. So on that same token with with what's going on in the world, um there's been a lot of I don't want to say men because it's 98% men who have crossed the line in many ways. You have a co-star on your show that was on your show that was let go because he crossed the line. Do you think men are targeted? Do you think that they it's the, the topic is too sensitive and they shouldn't be punished the way they're being punished? Or do you think they need to be punished more? I mean, what, what's your thought about that? Well... You know what? I, I have to be honest. I think that, and I think that we're, we're all like, I'm, I'm nervous that I'm going to do something or say something that's going to be a big deal to somebody. Um, I think that we need to all be aware and be much kinder and not stick to, I mean, first of all, to yell and scream at people and, and put them down is to me is abuse. Mm -hmm. And um, to, you know, obviously to touch someone or say something you know, sexual to someone is uncomfortable. And we know, and men and women, that we've had that for all of our lives. And so it's up to us and look at all the people that couldn't say anything because they're scared. They're scared. I mean, think about that. You're putting in somebody in a situation that they can't tell anyone because they're going to lose that job. And that 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 is the best money they've ever made, or they don't know where, where it's going to go. And, um, and I really do believe that... Um, we just have to be aware of what's coming out of our mouths and, 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 and there has to be a consequence. I mean, like anything in life, there has to be a consequence that if you continually do something and you have been told not to, and you say, well, that's who I am. And you continue to do something. You you do not get the privilege of being on a show or the privilege of making the kind of money, unless you make that money and you you put it to some good use and right. it helps I agree. It for someone else. So that's, I do believe in that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and in line with that though, <clears throat> is that I think, and I felt this way with the hashtag Me Too movement, that it was a completely necessary and legitimate movement, but to a certain degree got denigrated because they lumped in things that don't belong there, right? There's no question that sexual harassment or even just regular harassment, particularly right. of women, but in any case, workplace harassment, right. the real thing. 
But if somebody that works you work with for 10 years comes in with a new dress and you say, wow, you look great in that dress. That's not harassment. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I agree. agree. Yes, I agree. thank Don't you. Don't throw that you. in with everything no, else. Right, because right. And I think that happens. Hey, yes, yes. I think that happens with a yes. lot of um, movements that mm-hmm. things kind of get stuck on there. You know, it that legitimizes happen. them. It gives it gives yeah. the side that is against the concept right. ammunition to say, look, they're picking on everybody. You can't say a thing anymore. Right. So well, it, and that's scary. And right. you feel you do. You feel you, you feel re- really like um paralyzed. And you know, I I, I was teaching at the groundlings, so and when all this sort of stuff happened, now you have to go through all of these um um you know type of meetings with people and you can't say this and I can't say to some girl, oh my God, you're gonna do great because you're so beautiful. And right. I can't say that stuff. And I'm like. That's yeah, I was raised with, with compliments. You tell someone, I don't do it if 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 I don't mean it. Right. And and so, and for someone to to, you know, it's just so it it's it's a little unbalanced. And you think that maybe it's all being thrown at us at once, and eventually we're going to realize, oh, oh, okay. So that's what you mean by that, or that's what, but it's really yeah, hard. Yeah, that's what happens. The pendulum, you know, the floodgates have opened, the pendulum has swung all the way over and it will come back. It will come back to a place that makes more sense, I think. Yeah, of legitimate better. complaints, of legitimate problems. Because yeah. you're about, uh, especially, I mean- And there were uh, plenty of it. Having a son, right? I mean, uh, boys are boys. And, uh, uh, you know, even if a, a, a boy in college or high school says something, I'm not talking about if he, if he does something, right. touches or whatever. Yes, but it doesn't work, yes. Yeah. Something like, damn, you look awesome today, right? Something like that. Theoretically, they could get written up or, and so how do you teach them not to say that? Because they're kids and they're, they're saying something that they truly feel. Right. Well, I think when it all started, my son was, and he's, he's always on the computer. So he's, he's not a very a social kind of person, but when he, when all that started, he came to me and he, he's scared. He's scared because he's such a sweetheart and he's scared to say something, or if, if he were in public and there was somebody there to give somebody a compliment and it it's so coming from his heart. So, um, I think that is really hard if you, if you if you are raising boys and even girls too. You know, mm-hmm. also too, if somebody said like to her daughter, "Hey, I love your hair." Some guy said that. How do you t- then tell her it's it's okay if she, he loves right. her? Hair. Right. <laughs> or but if he starts touching it, yes, yes. Right. And, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you know, it's the same with race too. Um, right. You, you can. Um, I have. You know, my black friends have had to sit their sons down and have the talk that white people do not have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's sad. I mean, it's really sad how long it's gone on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, you you can, you can be, uh, well, how, how can I articulate this? It's like, you know, I, I think that you don't, you don't obviously, I, you don't want to be racist, but if someone who's a minority commits a crime, it's a crime. Right. It's a crime. Right. It's, you're not being racist because you caught that person doing something illegal and criminal. Right. You know, and, and I just think it's amplified so much now. And like we said, like mm-hmm. it's hopefully going to, we're going to find, find, you know, the, the medium thing, something that, that makes sense to everyone. We still have to be kind to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the, the, cli- the, the, the climate in, today is just, it's it's incredible how 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 much I mean look what happened to Nancy Pelosi's husband yeah. look at that no it's ridiculous Harry. like who in the who and in the hell making, gives you and they're making excuses about it and jokes about it and it's and it's like you who in the hell t- said you were God who in the hell said that's okay to do that because you don't like that person right who, right. who raised you and then that's the problem mm-hmm. right well and that's why I think you guys have a lot to contribute to the future because. The one thing that I think permeates through every uh, segment of society is humor. Humor can diffuse, it can educate. You know, you look at a guy like Dave Chappelle, who I think is one of the most brilliant guys. Mm-hmm. You know, humor has a, a very important place in our society, especially now, 
to mm-hmm. point out the foibles of of both sides of everybody um and uh, whether it's stand up or whether it's a role that you play uh i think that's important and so on that note what what is the future for each of you what what do you guys hope to do in the next year or two start with kathy um well i hope what i'd love to do is start performing eventually in performing arts centers and theaters i really would like to um her show by the way show the one woman show is so awesome and wonderful and who's the woman in it uh kathy and um but i it's it's she needs to be out there and educating yes. people about yes. her show so i want that's something that i want to be doing more around the country i really would like that to become a special on on one of one of the uh, premium channels or pbs something like that i wanted to i wanted to be seen by a, a wider audience and i'd like to do a lot more acting too and well, me. your hair, the color of your hair is so amazing. It, it fits you so well. And actually, okay. you know, you think, oh, I have gray hair. I look older. You actually don't. It's just the opposite with you. It, you're, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's you. I would not change oh, that. It it's it's like your olive skin. It, it, it goes, is. It really goes together. It's gorgeous. So good for you. And am I going to get in trouble for saying that? No, Ooh, and so I, lawyer, will be calling you. And <laughs> I am wearing a wig, so be careful. <laughs> oh, Mindy, no. what, is it, what are you hoping for? Um, I'm hoping that my son gets to do a podcast that he wants to do because that will bring him great joy. Oh, and um, so I hope he will do that soon. And um, I, uh, well, I'm still doing um, the Goldberg, so I'm grateful. Uh, oh, that little show that little oh. show that's given me that's given me a really really you know nice sort of home and I love the people in it and it's it really helps me out a lot and um I would love to do something where there's more improv like a curb or something that that's my my first love that is type improv. Of show. yeah that yeah. type of show <laughs> and you know and just keep you know being we're I don't know, being a friend that's awesome <laughs> well and I I want to point out one of the funniest lines I've ever heard because it it really it's been it's been a love of mine since I was a kid in one of your routines you talked about Pez oh my god yes described it in a way that I've never heard as a cartoon character with a tracheostomy tracheotomy <laughs> tracheotomy is tracheotomy it? yeah it's either <laughs> uh, oh, it's but, uh, but hilarious because now now I can't picture it any other way. That's very and funny, I, and I and I haven't thought of that in years. <laughs> Use it again because it's it's funny. Uh, it anyways, this is well, but your stand up show, Kathy. Um, can we're going to show a little clip of that? I think okay. Um, in this podcast, so people will get a, a little taste of it. Okay, um, great. and that's great. It, and it's wait, awesome. you should. You should also um, put on where, um, like her Instagram, because she will let people know when she's performing again. And I was supposed to go last night, but I got tired. But uh, I love going to see her stuff. She's I, a great audience. It's, I, I literally just light up when she does her stuff. Are you ever in San Diego? Um, I haven't been in a while. Do you have a connection? Do you have a connection? Come on like, down. We'll find well, Maybe we do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I, we'll look into it. Definitely. I will let you know the closest I've been to San Diego was in San Juan Capistrano a few. Hey, weeks. we go there all the time. That would all be all the awesome. time. Yes, at the the coach house or the coach. No, I wasn't at the coach house, oh. but um, it was a very tiny theater, nice, mm-hmm. really sweet theater. Um, but um, yeah, I haven't been to San Diego in a while, and I would love. I used to go down there a lot when I was uh, when I first moved out to LA, and I was working at the comedy store, and I would work at the La Jolla comedy mm. store. Right, I mean, right. It was so much fun. It yeah. was so much fun. This has been great. I think we're going to get a lot of response. Oh, great! Do you want us to come back? Of course, of course. Okay, Part two. I just want to make sure Sweet. that we're doing okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, definitely. And hopefully, we can all go to one of Kathy's shows. And and get together, have some drinks, and be. Oh, in a that program. would be great. We love right. drinking. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again for being with us. Thank you, guys. you guys are awesome, and yeah. what you and what you're doing is and really great. What you're educating, and I'm hoping that people, that men, listen and are not shamed by it, 
and thinking that they're, you know, fucked up and they can't, you can't change. We all are learning to be better people. Not mm -hmm. all of us, I agree. But um, it's like, um, you know, we don't want, I don't want to live with someone toxic. She right. doesn't want to live with someone toxic. Neither. And you don't, you, do. and you, won't, you don't want to be stagnant in life. Yeah. Life is about change. And some of the changes right. we go through are more uh, hot than others, mm -hmm. you know, or more charged than others. But it it doesn't it never stands still and and I think when you in life you get in trouble when you try to make it stand still. Our yeah. motto is live life, live young, and that's that's what we've been trying to do is stay healthy, do what you can do, stay interested, stay right. involved, Curious. stay relevant, stay live live your best life. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. You only have one. Mm -hmm. right. Thanks again. We really thank you both. Thank, thank you, and uh, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Yes, great. Bye. 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 Bye.